Revelation 4007. From the 24th to 26th of March 1947. Extraordinary grant of grace dependent on free will. Spiritual knowledge must also be acquired, it does not come to the human being without his will and activity, even though it is an obvious gift of grace. But the offering of this gift of grace presupposes a way of life according to God's will and the will to let God's grace become effective in oneself. The human being must consciously enter into contact with God through prayer and unconsciously through loving activity, he must surrender himself in prayer to the Father of Eternity, he must give up his own will and completely submit to God's will, thus give himself to him. Then God will take hold of him and shower him with abundant grace. It is an act of free will if the human being establishes contact with him, but it results in inconceivable blessings. The will is in no way forced to move in a certain direction, the human being can use it in completely different ways, but if he completely relinquishes his own will, if he only allows God to rule and if he humbly accepts everything from God's hand, then he will truly not come to any harm. God will provide him with abundant spiritual gifts which will not lose their value, with light and with strength. With knowledge which will not lose its value. With a knowledge that outweighs all earthly knowledge. But never will a man be able to receive this knowledge who does nothing himself to become partaker of God's grace. He will ask God for what he desires in the firm belief that his request will be granted. But he cannot be given a precious gift if he does not establish contact with him in prayer. But this is only possible if he believes in him as love, strength and wisdom and he can only gain convinced faith by thinking about the Creator and the human being's relationship with him. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary that people take a stand on such questions which require inner contemplation and spiritual research. It must always be an obstacle, a barrier, which excludes the transmission of extraordinary gifts of grace. The human heart remains closed, the vessel in which God's Spirit would like to pour itself out does not open, because the human being does not desire anything he already believes to possess. He creates an obstacle for himself through supposed knowledge, he lacks the will to make use of God's grant of grace, and thus he is thoughtful according to his will to receive, and if this is weak he can also only accept little knowledge. He will not increase in realization but always remain in the same knowledge. Thus it is certainly possible to speak of a gift of grace when spiritual knowledge is imparted to a person, however, he has freely requested this gift of grace and also made himself worthy of it, and as soon as the freedom of the human will is used in such a way that the human being strives for increased maturity of soul, grace upon grace will be granted to him for God does not restrict it where the will exists to let grace become effective in itself. The human will, however, is given complete freedom by God, it is neither urged to strive upwards nor downwards, nor is the direction of the will dependent on knowledge, for even a person who is poor in knowledge can want, and thoughts will come to him from every side, good and bad. Whichever he decides is entirely up to him. But in so far as spiritual knowledge is imparted to him by human beings, it should be so important to him that he mentally takes a stand on everything which should lead him towards God. As soon as he is imparted teachings of faith he should think about what God requires of the human being, and he should first make contact with him himself, then he will also be grasped by God and guided into truth according to his desire. Thus the will must be present to come close to God and to walk the path which is shown by God, which is pleasing to him. Whoever strives for this will truly not remain ignorant, he will not be left in error, for his will has opened the door of the heart into which God's grace can now flow unhindered. Depending on the human being's will is the measure of the bestowal of grace. If the human being's will is strong and completely fulfilled, 
then he will also be granted an extraordinary gift of grace which, however, also obliges him to pass on the knowledge he has received and to draw his fellow human beings attention to the fact that they, too, are walking the path which leads to knowledge. And if the recipient of extraordinary gifts of grace freely declares himself willing to use them for the blessing of his fellow human beings, he will also be granted spiritual knowledge accordingly, which reaches into all areas which are otherwise closed to people. For it is God's will to spread the truth, yet this can only happen under certain conditions which are always based on free will. Amen.